Hey, how's it going guys? It's Eric and welcome back to a brand new video here on the Bioshock Hub. So, the Bioshock franchise has a ton of characters within it. Some are more important than others, but nonetheless, there are still a lot of characters within the Bioshock universe. However, as I mentioned, some are less important than others. So, that is what this video is particularly going to focus on. If you want, I could make this into a little mini-series because there are a ton of characters that I can actually make more videos like this on. So if you want to see that, show some support on the video. I would be more than happy to make a part two. So anyways, with that being said, here are five of the most forgettable or irrelevant, whichever you prefer, characters within the Bioshock franchise. So sit back. Relax, and I hope you guys enjoy. In at the number five slot, we're going to be taking a trip to Columbia. And the character that we're going to be talking about is Chen Lin. He should have had a much more impactful position within the game, especially with giving the guns to the Vox for their rebellion. But you only have one actual conversation with him. Other than that, poof, he's dead. But... Here's what actually happened during the events of Bioshock Infinite. Booker and Elizabeth are forced by Daisy Fitzroy to collect weapons from Chen Lin in exchange for the First Lady airship, which Fitzroy had taken in the name of the Vox. After making their way to Fink Manufacturing, they find posters of Chen Lin all around the area, showing that he is a wanted man for his connection with the Vox. Continuing to his workshop, they find that Chen Lin isn't there. Instead, Chen Lin's wife, Mei, tells them that her husband has been arrested and is imprisoned at the Good Time Club. Booker and Elizabeth head out, but arrive too late and find that Chen Lin was beaten to death during interrogation for supporting the Vox. Elizabeth notices a terror over Chen Lin's body and ends up opening it. She sees that Chen Lin's body is no longer visible and that he could possibly be alive in an alternate world, and so the two travel through it. Still, ultimately, no matter what, Chen Lin is dead. And like I said, he should have had a much more impactful position within the story, especially helping the Vox with their rebellion. But, alas, we didn't end up seeing that. So, I'm not the game developer, I'm not Ken Levine, Whatever he says goes, I just wish that Chen Lin was incorporated a little bit more with the story of the Vox Rebellion. So, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And at the number 4 slot of today's video is Miss Lazarus Vector herself, Julie Langford. Now the reason why I put her on this list is for the simple fact you only speak to her for about 30 to 45 seconds. And then Andrew Ryan decides to be a complete dick and kill her. Anyways, when Andrew Ryan released a chemical into the atmosphere that threatened to destroy the plant life in Arcadia, Jack, spurred on by Atlas, sought out Langford to see if she could help. As Jack approaches the locked laboratory, Langford appears on several televisions outside the lab and is startled by what had happened to her trees. At first, she accuses Jack for the death of them, but quickly realizes that it was done by Ryan's hands and asks Jack to find her a sample of Rosa Gallica while she continues to work. While Jack gives her the rose, he is granted access to her lab, but when he finally reaches her, Andrew Ryan floods her office with a toxic gas, while reminding her about how he holds the property rights to Arcadia and the contract for the manufacturing of the Lazarus Vector. Just before dying, Julie scrawls the combination to her safe on the window of her office. Within the safe, the player finds the formula for the Lazarus Vector, a concoction invented by Langford that promises to revive Arcadia's trees and other plant life. So again, it sucks because this was a huge part in the game. And the fact that you only talk to her for about 30 seconds before Ryan kills her off, or I should say, the game kills her off, it just really doesn't make sense. Again, I wish she could maybe have accompanied you to help pick out what she needed, such as the chlorophyll solution, etc. 
but alas, she's only in the game for 30 to 40 seconds just to allow the player to know what the objective is to build the Lazarus Vector. So again, I wish she was in the game a little bit more, but that's okay. Coming in at the number three slot is probably the most comical one on this list. Just for the simple fact, for two reasons. One, you never see him or his character model. And two, he had a screen time of about five seconds. So at the introduction of Bioshock, when the bathysphere finally reaches and surfaces up into Rapture, you meet a character named Johnny. Literally within five seconds of the bathysphere reaching the surface, he's gutted by a splicer. So, to me, that's funny. And that basically epitomizes an almost useless character. However, he does have a little backstory to him. Johnny reported the crashing of Jack's plane by the lighthouse to Atlas, who sent Johnny to investigate who was there. And obviously, since you've played Bioshock 1 and you probably already know what happened, Atlas already knew it was going to be Jack. But anyways, I digress. Atlas warned him that he hacked the security systems and can't help him for much longer than that and he needed to hurry. By the time the bathysphere carrying Jack, which Johnny had been waiting for, arrived, Johnny was trapped by a female spider splicer named Rose, who was menacing him outside the bathysphere. He attempted to bargain with the splicer, saying that he meant her no harm or to trespass and that she could keep his gun. However, the splicer simply lunged at him and disemboweled him, causing him to fall into the water next to the bathysphere. And I've checked multiple times on multiple different occasions. Every time I look next to the bathysphere into the water, there's no body. So I don't know where they got that from, but hey, whatever. I'm just reading you guys the backstory. I just still think it's comical that when the bathysphere finally surfaces, the first character you meet by name only has a screen time of about five seconds. So for me, that's hilarious. And at the number two slot for today's video is, ironically, someone from Bioshock 2, that being Grace Holloway. Now, hear me out. Grace Holloway has a lot of lore with the backstory of the game. However, in Bioshock 2, the execution with her as a character really isn't there. More or less, she's there to antagonize the player in Subject Delta. So, to me... It seems like it's a secondary antagonist to Sophia Lamb, even though they're both equally annoying. But I digress. Subject Delta encounters Grace in Pauper's Drop when he needs to get an access key from her to continue his journey along the Atlantic Express Railway. Being Lamb's local authority in Pauper's Drop, Grace is immediately aware of Delta's presence and sends splicers loyal to the Rapture family to kill him. She refers to him mainly as Tin Daddy and provokes splicers to attack whenever he gathers with a little sister. Eventually, Delta confronts her in a safe room in the ruins of the Sinclair Deluxe. She is old and offers no real resistance, so she allows him to take the key but taunts him saying that he should kill her because that's all his kind are good for. So, if anything, she's here to teach you a lesson to not judge a book by its cover. Because I know a lot of players do end up killing her at this point, but me personally, since I enjoy the good endings of the games, I actually spare her. So, the player can choose whether or not to kill Grace, and the outcome of this choice affects the storyline. If the player lets her live, She'll have a change of heart and send Delta some friendly security bots to help him escape from the area, and later some supplies through the Numo in Siren Alley. Afterwards, she is never heard from again, leaving her ultimate fate unknown. When the subject, Delta, takes control of the little sister, and I'm not sure why they put that on the wiki, they need to really adjust their English there, but later on, on the cell blocks after you take control of the little sister, he sees a red marble statue depicting the way he treated Grace. If Delta is spared it's Grace, or if Delta spared her, I should say, the statue will show him gallantly carrying her in his arms. If he killed her, the statue will show Grace cowering at Delta's feet, with him raising his drill above his head, prepared to strike. So, 
again, I do understand why she's in the game, but the execution of her being in the game makes her an almost completely forgettable character. Then finally at number one is my most hated character within any of the Bioshocks, and he comes from Bioshock 2 as well. That is Stanley Poole. I cannot stand this character whatsoever. But here's the backstory. After Subject Delta drains Dionysus Park to save Sinclair, the little sisters begin exploring the park to collect Adam for Sophia Lamb. Stanley Poole, who has locked himself in the control booth of the Atlantic Express Station, like a coward, does not want this, as the Atom contains memories from the corpses there. If Lamb obtains the Atom, he fears the secret and betrayals that he performed will be revealed, because he is a dumbass. By blocking the train, Stanley forces Delta to prevent the Little Sisters from gathering Adam. Delta cannot advance towards Eleanor until he completes this task. So, each time he saves a Little Sister, that being Subject Delta, Eleanor gives him flashbacks of what Stanley did to Eleanor. And if you didn't know, Stanley Poole turned Eleanor Lamb into a little sister. So, he, one, he's a complete coward. Two, he's the one that basically sold Eleanor Lamb to an orphanage to make her into a little sister. And three, he is a lying piece of shit. So, anyways... I just don't like his character whatsoever, and I wish he wasn't in the game. To me, he shouldn't even be in the game in the first place. And like I said, he is probably, for me, the most forgettable character. Even though I hate him so damn much, it's hard for me to forget that he exists within Bioshock 2. And I think you guys can agree, Stanley Poole is not a good character, so... Let me know what you think of the list of five that I mentioned within the video down in the comment section below. So ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's video. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, if you want this to be a little mini series, I want you to show a lot of support on this video. If we can get anywhere from 70 to 80 likes, I will make a part two. And also, if you want to suggest some forgettable characters down in the comments, be my guest. I would love to see and hear your inputs. Anyways, if you did enjoy, feel free to drop a like. It helps the video greatly. If not, you can dislike it. It's completely okay. If you're new and want to join the Rapture family or see the Rapture family grow, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, share the video with some family and friends, and turn on notifications to never miss a video or a live stream. If you want to follow me on my social medias, you can follow my Twitter, my Instagram, or join my Discord server, which is down in the description below. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you all in tomorrow's video. Take care.